Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and let me ask you a question. Do you like trees? Do you like fractals? And more importantly, do you want to learn more about biology and life on planet Earth by using a simulation that's sort of mind-blowing? Well, do I have a present for you today? And the present being this right here. The actual tree of life. The visual simulation that was recently created by the team behind the paper you can find in the description. And let me show you how mind-blowing this is. This here shows us roughly around 2.2 million species on planet Earth in essentially a single simulation or a single fractal. For example, let's find ourselves. Let's find humans. And so here we're going to be jumping through the entire tree of life looking for us. And this is just absolutely insane. Every single leaf on this tree, every single leaf stem and every single branch represents a kind of a connection of the entire life on our planet. 2.2 million species in this one single tree. And that is just insane. It's so many as a matter of fact that the scientists couldn't even find the images for the vast majority of them. Most of them are still unknown to us and have not really been studied in any detail, barely known at all. And honestly, to someone who communicates science, this is one of the biggest gifts I could ask for for Christmas. This is something I'm going to be using for years and years to come. Which is of course the primary reason someone created this. Visualization in terms of research, biology research, but also teaching and science communication. And so far nobody has ever done anything as groundbreaking and as mind-blowing. With the study right here describing how all of this was created and why it was made to begin with. And so in this video, let's explore this, let's I guess climb the tree of life and talk a little bit more about what you're going to be finding this if you get to explore this yourself. And first of all, let's actually start with the visualization itself. Right here in the bottom left corner, you have an ability to change the settings for how you would like to visualize this. For example, if you're more into actual trees, you can make it look like a fern or you can opt for something a little bit more traditional. Although honestly, I really love the spiral and all of the fractals that it generates, so I'm going to be going with this. And it's sort of important to understand what the colors of each leaf represent. It specifically sort of applies to some of the more complex animals that we get to see once we zoom in to the complex light here. But right about here, you'll start noticing that some of the leaves appear to be red, whereas some of them appear to be green. The red leaf in this case represents something that's extremely endangered and is on the verge of essentially being extinct. You actually discover quite a lot of these all over the place. And honestly, this is such a great way to represent the actual fragility of life, but also how potentially some of the animals are going to be extinct really soon. Like for example here, if you look at frogs and toads, you can sort of right away visualize how many of them are doing okay and how many of them are potentially going to be extinct in the next few decades. But as you explore this, you'll also realize that the vast majority of leaves that we have here are actually gray. And that's because the tremendous amount of life on Earth, on our planet, is completely unknown to us and is still not explored almost at all. We actually have so little knowledge about most of the species on this tree, with some of them not even having a common name yet. Many of them have been discovered decades ago and still have not really been studied that well at all. But to me personally, the best part of this is the actual structure and the way that all of this was created and the way that it actually connects all of the species. In some way, this is actually an entirely new way to represent the evolutionary history of planet Earth. Here, the relationship between basically every branch and, in some sense, every leaf itself is more genetic or based on what's known as the phylogenetic tree rather than being connected through some sort of a taxonomy or through some sort of an unusual relationship that might not make as much sense. Some of the previous evolutionary or genetic maps usually looked like this. But honestly, this is just very, very difficult to both read and to navigate or to connect all of these species in a way that would be as meaningful as right here. Here, everything suddenly kind of makes sense. It's all visualized and it's all very easy to see. And more importantly, as the scientists mentioned in their study, a lot of the previous attempts to classify life were not really that descriptive. For example, how would you define a fish? Well, as you'll see from this tree, there are quite a lot of different variation inside the fish, and some of them are actually extremely different from one another. As a matter of fact, some fish, like the ones you find under jawed vertebrates, 
genetically are a lot more related to us than they are to fish that are not jawed vertebrates. And so this implies that certain animals, so in this example it would be fish, in reality are actually extremely different from each other based on the genetic sequencing, and they are a lot more similar to mammals than they are to other fish. With this stream making this a lot more clear once you start exploring it. On top of this, to make this a little bit more, I guess, educational and for research purposes, the scientists here created what's known as the popularity index. If you're wondering, we're number one. And not surprisingly, dogs and wolves are number two. And interestingly, cats are only number 12. But there's a reason for this index and it's actually not just for fun. The scientists also believe this can help with awareness and with conservation efforts by informing us where there's not a lot of public interest in a certain species that needs to be popular or I guess needs to be saved. And so based on the animal that's being preserved or based on the conservation efforts, the scientists have actually created a relatively easy way to access this popularity list by using the free to use API service that's available in the link in the description. Also naturally, weed turned out to be the most popular plant, with cabbage and potato coming relatively close as well. Although why prickly pear is number 5 is a bit of a mystery to me. And so that's just one of the first services that this particular website decided to offer, there are going to be so many more coming in the future, mostly because the scientists have registered this as a UK charity. So basically this is now an actual charity that tries to promote science education and of course different types of conservation and potentially other services as well. And that's because by visually exploring this, you'll actually start to understand the main message here. Once you start discovering a lot of these red leaves pretty much everywhere you look, with quite a lot of grey leaves in between as well, you might come to the same conclusion. The conclusion being that while a lot of species on our planet seem to be in danger, but at the same time many more species are completely unknown to us and need to be studied. We need to understand what's happening to our planet because this tree also contains us in there as well. And so if any of these branches and if any of these leaves start failing one by one, it's not really long before our leaf also starts shriveling to some extent as well. And it's a really important message, but it's a message that takes a little bit of time to reflect on in order to understand. And so honestly, this Google Earth of Biology, as the scientists refer to it, is absolutely amazing. But I was also kind of curious, you know, how was this created? How did they manage to create this in just approximately 10 years or so? Well, a lot of this is to some extent procedurally generated. A lot of the information here is automatically fetched from the web, with many of the images being in public domain. And in some cases, by clicking at individual species that might have a leaf representation, such as this northwestern salamander we have right here, you'll actually then trigger the system to discover as much about it as possible, including its Wikipedia if it has one, and a lot of other sources, including its conservation status or how well it's doing in terms of surviving. But if available, it also tells us about the genetic component of this animal. And then, if you want to, you can also become its sponsor. Or in other words, you can support the development of this charity and this website and this service by supporting each of the individual leaves. According to the scientists, they already have approximately 800 different supporters. And I'm actually thinking of maybe joining them as well, but I'm not really sure what to choose yet. If you have a suggestion, leave it in the comments below. I mean, we have 2.2 million choices with many of them completely unexplored, so yeah, there's definitely a lot to choose from. But since this system right now only has roughly around 85,000 classified species with actual pictures in them, the majority of these leaves will be pretty much completely empty, with basically just something like this as its information, once again because a lot of this is unknown to us. I guess in some way another way of seeing this is as a tree of human ignorance. Although that's a more negative approach to this, this is still pretty amazing. But because this is still a work of progress, some things also don't really work as well as they could be working. I mean, for one, this is still a little bit sluggish even on my relatively powerful computer. At the same time, the search itself could also use a little bit more refinement, mostly because the search currently doesn't seem to focus on the common name as much as the scientific name. So for example, here I was trying to find the dodo birds and I don't really know where they are. And the same with the Tasmanian Tigers. The reason I wanted to show you these is because their leaves are supposed to be black and that's because they've recently gone extinct. But since this was made by basically a couple of researchers and it was only released a few weeks ago, I don't really blame them for having some errors here and there. 
I'm sure with time they'll figure all this out and it will work like magic. For now, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to showcase in this video. And honestly, just jump in and explore this by yourself in the link in the description below. And if you find something really, really cool, something exciting, something really interesting, post it in the comments below so that we all can take a look at it. Like, for example, something like this creepy worm you see right here. Definitely not something I would want to meet in person. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves to learn about science, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.